Where did the Sephardic Jews go when they left the peninsula? Whether they left from Castile or Aragon or some hardy souls from Navarre and from Portugal? Well, we saw that some, at least in the early years, went to North Africa and went to Italy. At least parts of Italy welcomed these Sephardic Jews. The Muslim lands did as well. But the greatest success that the Sephardic Jews had was also further east in the Mediterranean. The Ottoman Empire, which was slowly growing over the course of the 15th century, which by 1517 had taken over so much of the eastern Mediterranean, from uh, Jerusalem and Israel to Greece, it's this Ottoman Empire who now was one of the major, major forces in the Middle and Near East. They looked upon the Sephardic Jews as a wonderful resource. Here were Western educated individuals coming with knowledge of a wide variety of subjects, cultured individuals whom they could now draw into their own country to help build up their glorious civilization and culture. And so the Ottoman rulers, who truth to tell when they had conquered Constantinople from the Byzantines in 1453, treated the Jews in this capital city horribly generally treated the Greek-speaking Jews, the Romanio Jews, quite poorly, as, by the way, they treated all of the peoples who they conquered at that time. No different than other conquerors, but when it came to the Sephardic Jews, the Ottomans, the Ottomans welcomed them. The Ottomans gave them a home. And in fact, in the 16th century, the Jews who come from Sepharad flourish in the Ottoman Empire. They flourish in the Ottoman Empire in the northern tier of the Mediterranean. Yes, the city of Salonika in the north, from almost having no Jewish population in the wake of the expulsion of the Jews from Iberia, the population surges with Sephardic Jews. And on the southern tier, of the Mediterranean. In North Africa, Sephardic Jews as well are accepted by the Muslim rulers. These Sephardic Jews who come with an extraordinarily rich culture, they come now as refugees. They come as refugees whether to the northern or the southern tier of the Mediterranean. These Sephardic Jews, many of them understandably depressed by the terrible events in their lifetime, they also come with great cr pride, great pride in their community's accomplishments. It's what an exceptional story that within a couple of generations, Sephardic Jews and their culture take over, take over the Jewish communities, so many of the Greek-speaking Jewish communities, and the Romanio Jews are shunted aside, if you will, Similarly, on the other side of the Mediterranean, Sephardic Jews encountered Jews who had lived in North Africa for many, many centuries, Dumustar Rabim, who spoke Arabic. The Sephardic Jews as well looked upon, down upon them and upon their religious customs and felt they had so much more to offer. We might imagine from today's perspective that refugees behaving in a somewhat high-handed manner is a little bit offensive. But you can also understand that these Sephardic Jews who imagine themselves as the Galut Yerushalayim Asher B'Sfarad, the exiles of Jerusalem that are in Sepharad, these Sephardic Jews thought that their culture was worth preserving. And so they did. Whether it is still speaking a form of 15th century Iberian vernacular, whether it's known as Judesmo, or Ladino, Judeo-Spanish, preserving songs from the times that they lived in Spain, preserving their religious writings, their halachic decisions, their religious customs in terms of prayer, their sidur and their machsor, that they pass on to all of the communities which they enter. And Sephardic Jews still today 
pray according to those rites. We should, though, go back to our peninsula, where we said officially there weren't any Jews after 1498, that anybody who remained had officially converted to Christianity, and that was true. But especially in the kingdom of Portugal, where there was no choice, like in Castile or in Aragon, when the Jews in Portugal were forcibly converted, you could only imagine the level of Jewish observance that existed among these Portuguese conversos. In fact, King Manuel was aware that this was going to happen. He promises the Portuguese Jews, now conversos, that no inquisitorial tribunals would be set up for two generations, for 40 years, and he keeps to his promise. In 1437, the inquisitorial fires start to burn. There are many conversos in Portugal, many conversos who are secretly observing Judaism in some fashion. And conversos throughout the peninsula, most who become part of Christian society, but a goodly number of them who over the course of the 16th and even the 17th and even the beginning of the 18th century leave the peninsula and go to France, go to Italy, go to North Africa, go to the Ottoman Empire. Later in the 17th century, uh, go to uh, the low countries, to Netherlands, to England. And a number of them resume their public Jewish life. So as we conclude our saga of medieval Sephardic Jews, we conclude our saga at a time when Sephardic Jews have become transformed yet again. We watched as their community grew in the days of the Roman Empire. We observed them as they were integrated in Roman society, as they were shunted aside during the time of the Visigoths with the forced conversions, as they created a glorious Sephardic culture under Islam, how they transferred that culture changing it all the while as they began to live in the Iberian Christian kingdoms. And now Sephardic Jewry embarks upon a new era. The Sephardic diaspora spreading throughout the Mediterranean and the Near East. And let us not forget the descendants of the Iberian conversos, some of whom still harbor their faith in Judaism and still sought means to continue that faith if it were at all possible.